Incognito have teamed up with former group member Kelly Say to release a single in support of the Hurricane Sandy and Typhoon Boat for rebuilding efforts. With all proceeds donated to UNICEF and Rebuilding Together, Brighter Than The Sun is available on iTunes. Just type the words Incognito and Brighter into the iTunes store search box. Then for less than a toast of a chocolate bar, you can listen to a great tune and help this very worthy cause. Thanks, people. DJ Gloss. Shine, because you know it's time. You're listening to DJ Gloss, and I'm Louis from Incognito. Peace. Please remember to support that worthy cause. Okay, we're going to do the interview now. So, a very good morning to Angela from Gideon's Records and also to Bro Dad with us right now in the chat room. Don't forget, you can go there too. We're going to take you straight into the interview right now with Bluey. Ram Jam Radio, DJ Gloss speaking. Hey, how you doing, man? It's Bluey from Incognito. Hello, Bluey. How are you? I'm a, how, you, how you doing, man? You're all right. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. Yeah. N- nice to hear your voice. Do you mind if I call you Bluey? Bluey's fine. Yeah. That's excellent. Good. Thank you ever so much for uh, agreeing to do this. This is very nice of you. Thank you. And no uh, problem. Whereabouts are you? We're we're in South London. We're um, just sort of um, if you know where the Crystal Palace Tower is, you can see that. Yeah, I know where Crystal Palace is. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're literally uh, just down the road from the Crystal Palace Tower. You can actually see it from the studio window. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that's that's where we are in South London. Um, okay. Yeah, we've been been there for about ten years. Um, All right. And uh, start, started off uh, about 10 years ago, uh, always been a MOBO station, always mm. played uh, MOBO music, and, um, and we're still Lovely. here now. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Absolutely. Um, do you mind if I sort of ask you some questions sort of going back in time a little bit, Bluey? Is that okay? No problem. We can go back in time. Wonderful. Well, I, I wondered really how it all started with you and music. Uh, okay, yeah, um, I, I was five. My earliest recollection of life was actually being on the beaches in Mauritius and listening to music. It's the first picture I have as a human being, you know, it's my earliest thought Wonderful. And as, as a child. And uh, and I remember by the age of, that was five, and about the age of six and seven, I, I remember asking my conversations with my grandparents, telling them this is what I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to be that guy who who played the music like the guys on the beaches and made people feel happy, even when they looked broken and they looked like beat, you know, from hard work. You know, musicians would play and suddenly people would come alive and forget their worries. Yeah. And I just saw that as a kind of like, um, as, 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 as a beacon for me to aim for, you know. Wonderful. And I've been doing it ever since, and it's been quite natural. I've always known, I've never, you know, there was a little bout of like playing football where I got, Signed to Watford FC as 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 a as a, as a, as, as a kid as, yeah. as a you know like schoolboy uh, terms and all of that and um, and but that, I soon put that behind me because I, I realised that my my calling was really to use my music to to, to you know for, for my own pleasure and to make this world a better place really wonderful a combination you know I've been I've I've been living this this life of. Well, you know, this beautiful life ever since, you know. <laughs> that kids, sounds so. wonderful. That's great. So, so, how old were you when you did your first public performance then, Bluey? Oh, our first public performance was between the age of seven and, and eight. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I actually got the kids from my community. We all hated it because I had to, I made them all kind of like learn and, and come come by for rehearsals every night instead of just going out on the street in a ball. <laughs> You know, they had to come into my garden and, and yeah, they had to practice for the for the concert, you know. Yeah. And I uh, and uh, you know, I even made a little gate for people to come through and pay and pay money to come and see the concerts and of course people were encouraging of children and I quickly learned not just to be a band leader but also to be a businessman. Yes. So <laughs> good lessons learned. Very good lessons learned in, in, in the business, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <an> important one. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Do Do you remember uh, what the first um, performance was? What What was the song? Or what was? Do you remember the first one at all? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It was a little song that I wrote myself. Wow. And it was and it was and it was kind of stolen from various other little songs. I'm still doing it to this day. 
you know, I steal from my record collection and I put it in there and I write my own songs. But there is enough of me now who's traveled and, and, and gathered enough music, musical information to write purely from my heart and from my, my, my own inner being, you know, like yes. right from, you know, it's like, you know, they call it soul music. And uh, for me, it's not just like a genre of black music or, or, or music that is of a style, you know, it's music that comes from within. Music, music from your soul. Yeah, I, I yeah. can tell, I can tell that from some of the lyrics in Leap, Leap of Faith. There's some, oh, thank some you. real, real uh, serious lyrics in there, and um, and understanding those fully. That's that's mm. great, wonderful, and, and, and a lovely yeah. album. I, I will say, uh, thoroughly, oh, thoroughly you. enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I was a bit nervous about releasing a solo album after so many years. I'm glad you you find an affinity with some of the songs. I, I think it's um, I, I think it's an absolutely wonderful album, and like I said, some of the lyrics are, are, are a real sort of clue into you, sir. So I think that's great. I think that's great. <laughs> so um, seven. That's a, that's a very early uh, early age to start performing, but um, you know. Uh, I've seen you on stage a few times. Um, the last time I saw you was actually at Brit Funk 30. That was the last time. Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, you. yeah. When we, when we played the O2. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, was, uh, that was a great gig. It was just a, a bit of a shame you came on last because we were running out of time. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it was a wonderful concert. Uh, and I was wondering why they haven't done a Brit Funk 31, 32 and 33 since. But there mm. you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard putting all that, 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 all those guys together, you know. And uh, I think one of the reasons why it's kind of hard to, to put together is like some people, uh, everybody's kind of like some some people are not no longer doing it full time, as you know, in, in music. Yes, yeah. And and uh, and all, organizing something like this is pretty hard, and also even just getting people to stick to their time limits, you know. And yeah. uh, because some of them haven't done it for so long, they're kind of out there and it. They don't want to kind of give up their their slot, you know, their moment. And so backstage, it was causing a lot of friction. Yes, I, I bet it was. <laughs> but yeah, but, but for, for me, I live it so every day. So I, I you know, it was easy for me. But I think that's one of the hardest things is that even within within this beautiful thing, this, this beautiful, beautiful music community, you find people so so divided. It's uh, it's one of the reasons why I formed Incognito. I yes. did not really want a divided community. I wanted a community that can exist, coexists, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like we would not have had the success we've had if it wasn't for a movement. You know, when the Acid Jazz movement came along and, you know, the fact that we had brand new Evis, we had Galliano, we had young disciples coming out at the same yeah. time, it was, it was great. And we had that in the early days of the, of the jazz punk movement, but it was kind of like there was too much competition. Yeah. One of the things that killed it was there was too much competition and not enough, uh, it, not enough kind of communal kind of like love, you yeah. know, for each other. But the people that got it right was the people that were dancing to it and the DJs that were playing the music. They got it right. They got them, which is why these weekenders still draw an audience because these guys keep it alive. You know, yeah. we should have learned from the DJ, musicians should have learned from the DJs in that scene. Yeah. You know, because the DJ teamed up as a community. You know, you get like. Uh, the mafia and and, and 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 all these people, but they all work together. You know, Froggy, Chris Hill, yes. you know, and, and people like they were working together. You know, uh, but unfortunately, the bands not did not learn from that. They were so divided; it was unbelievable. It was like it made me think, you know, that it would kind of it, it would collapse. You know, and um, but but I'm, I was glad for the music that came out for that period. Certainly, yeah. I mean, it is a fantastic period, and of course, Incognito recognised as, as sort of the biggest Brit funk band on the planet, so to speak. So, you know, from from that point of view, um, you know, Incognito are you know sitting there at the top in in the view of myself and and all of the listeners and, and the people that are, I know, you know, from the various weekenders and and so yeah. on that that uh, absolutely love your music. So. You know, from my point of view, you know, we, we feel the love and we love to dance. So, 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. I, I have to uh, move on to uh, Mario, really, uh, Bluey, yeah. because you, you've got this concert coming up on the 10th of May uh, at the Albert Hall, which I'm going to. Uh, yeah. So is most of Round Jam Radio, actually. Um, we're, we're yeah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> so we're really seriously looking forward to that. And I know uh, Low Down and, um, and Can't Get Enough, uh, both on Transatlantic RPM, were both done yeah. with Mario Biondi. But I wonder yeah. how that connection started off, because it seems such a great connection. I just wondered where it started from. Yeah. Well, Mario's like loved, loved the band for a while, uh, and he would come to our gigs, and he would be backstage, you know? Yeah. But I became, I became a, a, a aware of Mario's voice when Charles Peterson played him at first on the show, and I didn't really make the connection that this was the same guy who was in my changing rooms. Yeah. You know, like talking about music with a great love of music and everybody telling me this is the, the Italian Barry White, you know, and it's like, and I, I get this, you know, people coming out from various corners, I've heard the Italian Barry White, and I was like, what are you talking about? They're talking about. And then I made the connection, and as soon as I made the connection, I wanted to help him kind of get to an international stage because he was already a big star in Italy. You can't walk down the street without, without people fr- flocking him, you know? Yes, yeah. And, he, he, you know, it's like there's certain parts of Italy where, you know, it's like Jesus when he walks down the road, you know, it's like it's like disciples start to follow, you know? Yeah. But, he is a but, lovely guy. I've spoken to him. He is a lovely guy. He's a wonderful yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, he did, this, uh, he, he did this track for me and I, and, 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 uh, I, I put Chaka Khan on there and he, was, and he loved it because no, he wanted down, that isn't it? Chaka Khan yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then great to low down, you can't go wrong, boss gag classic, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't stray too far from the original either. I didn't want to kind of like leave the essence. I just, the originality would be that it would be a duet, you know, between Chaka Khan and, 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 and Mario. That's why I wanted to kind of make a statement with that, that if I wasn't about to kind of destroy the, the classic, you know? It worked extremely but well. It worked. Yeah. And then he, you know, now I've produced his, uh, his latest album, Sun, and it's already gone to number one in Italy. And, um, and, I, uh, I have a copy of it right here in my hand. To release it. <laughs> yeah, it's just had to release it worldwide. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful relationship because Mario is just a great guy to be with in his studio. You know, great talent, easy going, you know, Italian. You get to eat great food when, it, when, it, when it's on a session. Cause Fantastic. Either, you know, where I'm willing to settle for a sandwich is like, oh, man, we've got to go and find a really good restaurant, you know. And, <laughs> and he's got somebody sourcing out restaurants to go and eat lunch, dinner, and, you know, and you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm all in for a good meal. Sounds good. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I have a copy of the album, Son. We, we, we got it ahead of uh, from right. Sony Music, so um, I got I a copy. Here. Very proud of it. L- love listening to it. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's really yeah. good. I loved working on that album, man. Anyone, anyone who actually got me, into, who would have got me into the studio with Al Jarreau was all right with me, and Mario did that. Yeah, well, Al Jarreau was one of Mario's idols, wasn't he? Um, as a, as a, as a right. kid, he said from about twelve he fell in love with Al Jarreau. To, That's to right. Me. Yeah, yeah. So um, to see to see them both in a studio singing was just like an amazing moment. Which I, you know, if, I bet. if you you know you had to pinch me, think that I was there. <laughs> and I got I got to write the song and produce it, you know. It's like it was really nice. <laughs> it must have felt wonderful. <laughs> yeah, all great. my all my Christmases in one. <laughs> That's the way to do it, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when um, when you did the remixes, Blue's remixes album, another one I yeah. absolutely love. I actually did a two hour show, um, which was oh, wow. <laughs> back to back on that album on the remixes album. It was oh wow. Uh, it's usually a fully soulful house show, um, but I did a two-hour incognito special, which was completely right. mixed back to back on that, and I loved every second of it. Uh, oh, thank uh, you. 1975 remixed. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, that... It's been looking for, right? <laughs> Brilliant yeah. tune. Yeah. 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 Uh, like that, that... That you would you you would definitely identify with that as a DJ, right? That's right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> without a it's doubt, big, it's picking you lot up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I, I just I just love I love the tune anyway, but the remix um, just kicking along there with, with a more it, of a sort of housey. It's, it's got a badass groove, hasn't it? Oh yeah, without a doubt. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. what was the, the inspiration to do those remixes? Um, you know, well, th- well, you know, it's like I'm I'm not a muso's muso, you know. 
I'm not one of those guys that just like sees music as mathematics and discusses musical instruments, you know, yeah. with everybody and it's like and uh, and sees us as an elite. I see music as a complete thing, and dancing is like a really poor part you know, of it all. That expression of like giving it to somebody and seeing their bodies move, you know, or even make my own body move when I'm in like the groove. Yeah, that's the sensation of it. You know, it's like. And club life has played a really, really important part in my in my life. And, and, and a lot of DJs from Charles Peters and Chris Hill, people who signed me over the years, you know. Yes. Most of the labels that I've been on are people who are involved with dance music. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, the obvious step was to kind of like to find, to put myself in that dance world, which is why when I started working with David Morales, Louis, Louis Vega and stuff in the, in the early 90s, Big I, was yeah. I was basically taking an opportunity to... To work with people whose music I was dancing to on, on, on you know on various nights in New York City in the club scene in the early 80s Wonderful. you know and, and it's like that's part of my life you know it's like you know when I used to go and listen to Chris Hill and Froggy and stuff I'd be by the desk you know or by their, by their turntables and watching what they're playing because you know, as I was dancing I would also kind of get an education from the, what tunes you know and stuff and I, I'm, I'm the complete you know uh, item in terms of like following dance music you yes, know yeah so for, for me it, it was just a natural part you know doing remixes is really important because you know you're not thinking in terms of like the song's done you've actually got the song and it's already conveying its message That's now right. you take it now you're taking it for you know when you give somebody a remix you much expect some people give people remix and think, oh they've, they've destroyed my song they put this beat on it Man, it's mm. like just don't allow your stuff to be remixed if you don't want people to actually Absolutely. turn it into a dance classic, you know, in their own genre. And every DJ is going to have a different ear to it, you know. Every every remixer is going to have their own ideas, you know. So, you exactly. know, you give it to Louis Vega, Louis Vega, he's got that whole sal soul thing that he comes from. That's you right. You know, he, yeah. he's, he's grown up with Vince Montana in his in, in his house, you know. Yeah. So, so you're going to get that Latino thing. You're going to get those swoop, swooping strings. You're going to get that really, really deep house beat. You know, it's going to be there because that's who that's who he is. That's you know, right. you give you give something to, um, to to David Morales, and he's he's going to have that kind of eclectic. It may he may even like down down tempo your your beats rather than up tempo your beat. Yeah, you more, know, more sort of Miami it, feel to it. it. That's right. It's yeah. got much more yeah. Miami feel to it. It's, it's beach music. Yeah, you know, it's it's not trying. It, it's, it's not going to use a lot of live players as much as Louis is going to, you know, it's going to use a combination, you know, and uh, and he's going to use beats that are more electronic, you know. That's Louis right. is going to put a lot more percussion and acoustic elements to it, you know, and the elements of life, you know, it's like, yeah. it's what you're going to get with Louis, you know, and uh, so I understand my, my, my the guys who are remixing my stuff, you give someone to, it's like Ski Oakland or something, he's, uh, he's going to go that the house route, but he's also going to go very synthesized electronic on it, and yeah. uh, and I love that. You know, he's, he's done some of that on my on my own record with, uh, with you know with the, with the current single that we have, and he's done it loads of times on the remixes and the one that you're talking about as yes. well. Yeah, no, that's that's right. I mean, you you give it to Spin, you give it to Ralph Gum, you give it to Copyright. You're going to get three different tunes coming back. That's, and, that's right, exactly. You, know, you got it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, without a doubt, because they, they've all got their own their own um, yeah. definite. Uh, although it's all now, sort of within the genre, they've got their own sub genre of it. It's, it's that's right. Uh, it's it's very 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 good fun to to hear uh, on these EPs when they come back. Actually, you know the the, the different spins the different DJs have put on it, and you know. Yeah. But I, I must admit that doing the show um, completely incognito, um, it was the first time we'd ever done an all one artist show uh, for the for New Grooving on on Ramsey. Oh, that's good. And it oh. was great. It was really such a great show. It was. It was oh, nice one, man. Yeah, you really loved doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so your your current album, Leap of Faith, um, yeah. that that uh, like you said, you're, you're a bit concerned perhaps doing a solo album, but I, I think it's absolutely awesome. Um, can can you um, sort of tell us a little bit more about about putting that one together? If you've got time, I don't want to take up. Too yeah, much yeah, of yeah, time. yeah, yeah. No, um, Leap of Faith was a, a record that. Um, is, uh, was made because I, want, I, for one, needed to tap into that whole, uh, my, my influences in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, some of it had to kind of represent that because Incognito's music 
is basically based from the 70s. It's where I came from. It's where I discovered it. From you listen to 1975 and it tells you why I'm doing incognito. Yes. Right. <laughs> It's like you wouldn't need to go any further. No mistakes but, there. <laughs> but with my solo album, it also is that period where I wasn't doing it incognito, where I was working in America and I was playing guitar for bands like Total Contrast and, and, and Five Star. You know, it's like I was a session guy playing, yeah. you know, like a, a, a different kind of like music from a different era, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was working with people like Marcus Miller in the studio. Mm-hmm. And you can hear that on, 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 on my album, you know, it's like there's that kind of Marcus Millerish kind of sound on some of the tracks. Yeah. There is that Von Blackman kind of early 80s kind of sound. Yeah. There is that, that whole Kashifi kind of sound on some of the tracks. But there's, there's also, in, when it goes back retro, I'm like millionaire. I'm almost like on 60s soul, you know. It's like re- really late 60s, early 70s, yeah. uh, Charles Wright kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, it's it's different eras that I'm attracting, and um, also doing a solo album. It allows me to branch out a little bit because you know the main thing is that I'm actually singing. And within Incognito, I'm not going to really put myself forward. I'm, you know, I'm competing with Mesa, Carleen Anderson, uh, Vanessa Haynes, Tony mm. Monreal, mm. Chris Ballin. You know, it's like. Imani, some of the greatest singers in the world, you know, Chaka Khan, Mario Biondi. I'm not having any of that <laughs> <laughs> on on my record. I, I, I can do. I can, you know. I, it allowed me to just be the vocalist, the center, you know. I did. That's why I never even used anybody as a backing vocalist. I thought I'm going to do this. I'm going to just do it all myself. Yeah. Just, just so that I can create my own my own my identity. Because I plan to make a series of albums for like the next ten years, one a year. So you know, um, it, it's it's it, 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 I always look at stuff as a, as a project, you know. Yeah. And for me, for me doing this now, I'm going to do one a year, and I'm only going to put thirty days aside of each year, a month, you know. And that's what I, it took me twenty seven days to make this one, right? Record, make, you know. So, you know. That's that's I feel, pretty quick. I feel, I, feel I, I owe I owe myself a month of every year. It also made me just kind of live in a different kind of way, not going in the studio with a bunch of, with, with, a, with a group, yeah. expecting, you know, with a sound that I already know. It yeah. made me stretch out a little bit, you know, um, uh, ain't, on Ain't Nobody's Business. It was like, I, 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 it made me play, play a bit more blues That's than I normally do. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like it's different little things, different little experiences that I, I can now indulge myself in. You know, it's like... I don't eat a lot of chocolate, but now and again, I like to get a box out and just sit in front of the telly and indulge myself. Sounds like a my, good, my, my, yeah. my solo album is like that. Sounds like a great approach to a solo album, that actually. <laughs> and to turn one yeah. round in 30 days, I mean, 27 days, that is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's really good. So I was going to ask you actually what what your sort of plans were going forward, and you've kind of told us you know an album a year for this sort of the next sort of decade or so, which would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, what well, I've got right now is I've got um, I'm tour. I'm going to be going on tour. I've just finished a little tour with uh, Leon Ware. Yeah. I'm going on tour with a with a little side project with some of my band members and and Valeria Chan from uh, uh, from Galliano. Yes, and uh, he was touring with Jamiroquai at the moment. I'm going with uh, to Japan to do a tribute to. Uh, I'm doing the Donald Byrd tribute, oh, wow. and I make and I, and I make bring it to London because well it features uh, Jim Mullen as well uh, and Dominic Glover on trumpet, Jim Mullen on guitar, yeah. and uh, well, I've already started the new Incognito album, which is very organic sounding and all being recorded on tape and will come out on vinyl before it comes out on CD. Oh, wow. um, great! <laughs> yeah, just an album purposely recorded for vinyl. I mean, it's crazy, which is why we're recording on tape at the moment. We're not recording on digital. We're going to digital only at, as a last measure. Right. Um, but you know, it's like there's the Mario stuff. There's the tours. There's uh, two productions I'm about to do, and there's probably a tour which will come later in the year featuring. Um, some of the major British talents that are at the moment, and hopefully Joss Stone, but uh, because of what's happened to her recently, we have we've kind of put that on ice for a minute. Yeah, and uh, and um, I'm doing some work with Shaka Khan as well. So yeah. Wow. So um, and, and yeah. sleep? Are you going to get any of that as well? So. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, sounds like you're you're extremely busy, Bluey, and that, yeah. that's, that's trying wonderful. to fit family life in there somewhere. Mm, yeah, yeah, that, this is the thing. Um, so, I mean, you, the Donald Bird tribute is fantastic. We yeah. did one from the station actually, and then last week's yeah. Shockers with um, Vincent Montana and uh, and also Don Blackman. I mean, that um, that, that yeah. was a bit bit of a, a scary one. So, uh, yeah. and we've mentioned all of those actually this morning. So um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of our own tribute, I think, there, Bluey. That's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Um, so, really, I was going to ask you uh, if there was anything you wanted to tell the Ram Jam listeners about um, that you're doing that you haven't told us already during the interview. Uh, please yeah. feel free to do so and, and let them know because, you know, they love Incognito. Anything you're doing anywhere close by, they're going to be at. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, so please. Yeah. You know, there's, there's only one last thing. He, the, the, this, um, the catastrophe that happened in the Philippines and uh, and, yes. uh, and the superstorm Sandy in America. Yes. Uh, we we have people who live in uh, and band members and uh, former band members and musicians that we know from those communities, and it prompted us to do something. So uh, on uh, on iTunes, you can you can you'll find a record. Uh, by Incognito, featuring Tony Monroe, Vanessa Haynes, Natalie Williams, and various members of Incognito, and also Kelly Say, who was a singer who, who was with the band who lived in that New Jersey area. Yes. And we are contributing. Uh, it's called uh, "Brighter Than the Sun," right. and uh, and it's a little bit of a departure from my normal stuff, but it's to raise funds for that uh, for those causes and all the, all the money goes to that. So that one, I'm happy to give a shout out for. Well, Bluey, we'll immediately start playing that on the breakfast show on Ram Jam Radio and start promoting it with our listeners. Yeah, it's, it's, out on good it's out on expansion. It's on expansion records, right? Yeah, yeah no we're out the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, wonderful. But we, we'll make sure that we start playing that. I'll go and get a copy of that after this interview and make sure we start playing it as of tomorrow so our listeners go and buy it too. And that, that's what Thank we you want. very much. Appreciate right. it. That's a wonderful love. cause. Big love. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can I can I ask you one more thing, Blue, before I let you go? Yes, Would you do me a jingle? Yeah, no problem. Would you, uh, do you mind doing yeah. it live? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Shine, because you know it's time. You're listening to DJ Gloss, and I'm Bluey from Incognito. Peace. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you very much indeed, Bluey. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And, um, you know, I, yeah. I feel like we could have chatted for hours, but I know we've probably got plenty of things to do. So, uh, You're most welcome, Gloss. Uh, it, it was just wonderful. Thank you very much for your time and for your wonderful music. You know. Thank you. Peace. Yeah, peace to you. You have a blessed day. Bye. Take care. Thank you, Bluey. Wonderful interview there with Bluey from Incognito, and I've been dying to bring that to you all week. Um, great talking to the man. Just so much and so many things that you could talk about. I mean, that was only half an hour, and I feel like I could have spoken to the guy for, you know, three hours. Um, musical knowledge, all the experiences, all the places, all the different bands, just so much that you could talk about with somebody like him. And it was just a real pleasure to speak to a guy that I've seen on stage so many, many times with, you know, various different musicians in his band. But every time Incognito just deliver, you know, they are not the biggest Brit funk band on this planet for nothing. And uh, that man's sort of approach to it and, and the way that he uh, brings himself across comes right through in his music and um, I just just absolutely love doing it Shine because you know it's time you're listening to DJ Gloss and I'm Bluey from Incognito Peace Gloss A You're listening to Ram Jam Radio with DJ Gloss